Greetings, everyone. It feels like Christmas, and uh, if we're being honest, it's almost there. Uh, we have a new RimWorld patch to discuss today. It is RimWorld version 1.3.3200. And uh, it has some very welcome changes that I'm really excited to talk about. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. So first off, this is more of a paragraph than patch notes, but it uh, it's something that I wanted to, first of all, say is transformative to the game. So for those of you who have been watching on my YouTube channel, I have a very long running game that I have been playing. Uh, it was my first game that I started when the Ideology expansion came out, and I've kind of played it through the development and improvement of Ideology. And uh, if there is one thing that has sapped the joy uh, of playing RimWorld, which I love playing RimWorld very passionately, it is that the raids started to feel exceedingly samey. Every raid was a mech breach raid. And, uh, and this paragraph uh, speaks to Tynan's uh, devotion to the game and devotion to kind of getting things right. So it's a, it's a bit of a apology around the fact that Tynan recognized that the game was not playing the way that he wanted it to. They collected a bunch of feedback from Reddit, from in-game tooling, and really fixed things up and made it so that raiding is more diverse. Now, I've played uh, RimWorld now twice since then, two streams, so about 10 hours, give or take. And oh, what a breath of fresh air. I, I can't tell you how nice it is to now have uh, random mech drop raids or complicated try attack uh, pirate raids. It just it changes the feel of the game so profoundly that it just it, it feels like the game that I remember from from back in the day, which was lost a little bit. So that was a very long way of saying the biggest headline feature of the new patch is the retuning of the balance of raids, the enemy raids that are going to be coming in. So if you just wanted the high level, you got it, you can go about your merry way, but now I'm gonna talk about some of the minutia of the changes that were made. So Tynan felt that with this change being made, turrets could get buffed. So mini turrets got a damage and accuracy increase as did auto cannon turrets and uranium slug turrets. So turrets across the board, stronger. Uh, and here is another huge change. So mortar miss radius reduced from 10 to 9, which is, you know, normal. But second, and far more importantly, the accuracy of mortars is now related to a pawn's shooting skill. Skill 8 makes this, it, the, the same as before. Higher level skill will make the mortar shoot more accuracy, accurately, while lower will make it less accurate. I cannot express how incredible this is. I, I think it may get some more tuning because it is very powerful right now. Like I said, I have an endgame colony and I feel like I have mortar snipers. <laughs> I have three mortars set up and I have three near 20 shooting people firing them and it's just like laser precision. I'm picking things off. Feels great. Uh, turo, turret ammo cost is no longer factored into difficulty and reduce the uranium slur, slug turret uh, by a bit in terms of cost. So overall, buffs to mortars, buffs to turrets. Combat enemies. Uh, reduced termite mech thump range from 25.9 to 24.9. I think this is good. They were already right on the cusp of being able to be berserked without it causing major problems. So I think this is a smart... Uh, a smart solution. It makes them a little less dangerous. You're more likely to be able to pick them off a little sooner. Added a way to make special perfection raid strategy probabilities. I think this was necessary to retune the balance of raid attacks. Adjusted mechanoid raid strategy probabilities so that the late game they use breachers about 33% of the time instead of 90% of the time. Like I said, it was it was termite city all the time previously. So this feels really good. Uh, breachers no longer want to attack passable player buildings. Thank goodness. The number of times that I had like a geothermal and they were like, we're just going to cut the edge off your geothermal. Very frustrating, just made for a lot of work. Uh, changed termite thump cannon damage multiplier versus walls. I think this is really good. The fact that it would destroy any wall of any durability in a single shot just felt incredibly punishing. Uh, changed breach axes damage. Uh, 
to be slightly lower as well. Anything that slows down breaches, I think, is good. Having a little more time is, is beneficial. Uh, selection weight of the most recent raid faction is reduced by 60% when choosing a raid. I think this just means we're going to see more variety, which I think is nice. And then adjusted human factors uh, for more variation. All good. Like I said, this is the headline change. Food handling. Uh, all of this boils down to, in a nutshell, that handling of different types of ingredients is easier to handle now. So we now vary meal texture depending on ingredients. So I noticed this right off the bat, like packaged, packaged carnivorous meals are red, so on and so forth. Food restrictions are now automatically applied to pawns from ideologians that require specific food types. One last thing to try and manage, it was very difficult. The way that you would do this before is by saying that fine meals would always be vegetarian and then being very careful. The fact that you don't have to worry about that anymore, it's uh, it was needless micro that was very frustrating. Uh, meal inspect strings now display information regarding their ingredients. Handy, good to have. Uh, with ideology active, colonists will now automatically merge, will not automatically merge meals with different food types. Again, very nice. I haven't seen if this causes any problems with you having like uh, a bunch of different piles of meals if you have varied ingredients going into them. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, added food restrictions for meat and veg only meals, uh, insect meals, uh, food restriction is a special filter. That's great. Same for cannibals. And then this last point, uh, don't apply eight meal thought if vegetarian eats human meats allows strong cannibal precepts with meat eating negative precepts haven't fully parsed the sentence read it about 17 times uh comment below if you understand what that's saying <laughs> um sorry every once in a while i'm just like completely baffled and i'm like i don't think i get it maybe i'll get it when i try to to play as for our miscellaneous improvements, we worked how tree lovers respond to the destruction of trees to be smoother and a lot more consistent. Uh, tree density. Uh, I haven't played tree lovers. I watched uh, I watched Radamant's series where he was a tree lover. I think this will make it a little less uh, punishing. The tree density IDO precept now has a mood penalty directly proportional to the number of destroyed trees. Uh, I think that's a slight tuning of the way that it manifests in the mood in a moodlet but i'm not entirely sure uh bio sculptors now have more information when you're entering them which i think is useful uh healer mech serum has become easier to understand what has and is going to happen i believe is the change there uh pawns can now install pre-built furniture even if it is incompatible with their ideology thank goodness i've wanted to put down some of those cool floor options like the spike core tiles and things like that and i've actually bought them off traders and not been able to install them because i didn't have anyone to so i think that's really nice uh more more information about how biosculptors durations are going to affect you in the actual context menu seems great uh the the cycle duration is going to show up on the tooltip uh again very nice uh some research now requires the high-tech research bench brain wiring compact machinery i think that's a fine balancing thing i'm beyond it in my colony but that's okay Buildings in non-player, non-hostile maps can no longer be claimed if there are uh, owners present. I think this is a really good thing. I think it will make ancient complex raiding a little more complicated, but I'm going to have to wait and see. Slaves are now worth 75% of a colonist uh, in terms of map wealth. This needs to go lower, I think. I think 75% uh, is a good first step, but for the efficacy and combat power of slaves i think they need to be closer to 50 percent but we'll wait and see uh terminals and worship worshipful villages now take three seconds to hack i don't actually know what it was before so i'm not sure if that's particularly important or not uh, i've never had a problem uh with with hacking them uh change steel slag mass from five to eight so it doesn't weigh less than the steel that you get from smelting it minor change probably makes sense Added a loading tip uh, describing fixed wealth mode. So fixed wealth mode uh, basically means you can grow your colony as fast or as slow as you want. 
what I know of it is people who try to play with it on kind of like the highest level of difficulties get absolutely crushed by fixed wealth mode. But uh, I don't know a lot about it. And then total t uh, 10 quality info is now displayed in the uh, the heat if, uh, which I think is good. It's useful to be able to know what's going on. We'll go through these very quickly. These are just the fixes. But in a uh, in a nutshell, the thing that I am going to read next to fix is the thing that was broken, not how it works now. So uh, hood and torture crowns had no armor. Uh, transport pods built before the patch had a capacity of zero. I ran into this. I just deconstructed them, rebuilt them. Now it's fixed. Uh, uninstalling and reinstalling a mortar resets its cooldown. Apparently the cooldown carries over now. Uh, caravans sometimes fail to leave the map. Always good when caravans work more smoothly. Uh, newborn animals uh, from other factions don't leave with the faction. So I guess if like a cow has a baby cow... That won't leave with the faction. Now it will. Uh, less restrictive nudity precepts are inconsistent with allowed gear. That seems like something I haven't played with much. Uh, auto bong doesn't satisfy smoke leaf dependence. That seems like a nice change. Uh, special characters on named precepts can break the UI. Fair enough. Uh, starting package survival meals can be made of ingredients not allowed. Uh, tattooed artwork... Uh, integration bugs my phone is exploding i'm a professional uh error message uh for smelt products uh long range mineral scanner took 10x less work so now it will take longer to make a long range uh mineral scanner i think that's probably fine uh where's work speed penalty reasons formatting issue was fixed uh fixed gestational period stats for mega sloths and mega spiders since they don't have babies uh slab beds didn't burn uh blood from scarification it is from the cutter, not the cutty. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Psy Focus was previously recharged on Ritual Reward. I didn't know that. Uh, trade price uh, tooltip for selling bonus when a player's negotiator has the leader role. So I guess those weren't displaying properly. Uh, mortar draws interaction spot uh, when selected. So sometimes you would select a mortar and you wouldn't see where they'll stand to use it. If a hosted guest is imprisoned and enslaved, the gear they're wearing remains locked. Okay, so now you can strip uh, guests that you imprison. We recently did that in our game. Uh, Paralytic Abasia and enslavement has been changed the way that the ordering goes. Uh, meals with no meat uh, didn't count. Meals with no ingredients cause eight non-meat thought. Weird. Uh, players provided, uh, player provided saved game, uh, had a settlement with a non-functional trade button. Oof. Some, some of these are really in the weeds. Uh, hackables could be instantly hacked. Uh, the last one I'm going to talk about down here, bestowing ceremony, uh, target is undrafted. That's not the one I was going to talk about. It is autobongs reduce consciousness of max. Now, uh, Adam versus everything, uh, shout out to you, uh, found a way to weaponize auto bongs to reduce consciousness. Now this is important because consciousness is what determines when an enemy will pass out. So if you were to use an auto bong to get your enemies high before they arrived at your kill box, they would be much more easily downed when they got shot because they were high. Now mechs can't get high. Pour one out for that ingenious uh, strategy. Ooh, I skipped one other important one. Uh, darkness pawns have an outdoor lit accuracy debuff when targeting someone in a cave. I still don't f fully understand how the litness of the shooter versus the target work, but you know, it's a thing. And then uh, vegetarian pawns get mad eating vegetarian made pemmican. Those poor souls. But yeah, that right there is going to do it for uh, 1.3.3200. Uh, seems like a nice little quality of life improvement. Tynan is always on the ball with this stuff, and uh, it's looking like a good patch. Like I said, the big headlining change is more raid variety, and it feels great. So thank you for watching. Uh, definitely come on over and check out my ongoing RimWorld series. I stream it. Uh, at least once a week, 
and uh, there are a insane number of videos on the channel that you can check out if you are curious. But, uh, but yeah, for now, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll, uh, I'll see you on the rim. Bye.